Well, hello my friends and welcome to Siggy Air. Today we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and we are ready to take a flight from Edinburgh to Manchester. So in this video, this is, this is the second part of uh, two part videos on how to use the new flight planner in the EFB. And in this part, we're going to cover the web based interface for the flight planner in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. If you haven't seen my first video, I'm just going to link this up there and you can take a look at that. And I cover how to do flight planning from the EFB within the within the EFB in the um, in the simulator. Um, we, I talked about how this could be a Navigraph killer and I think it has a lot of potential. And if we go into the web based interface for the flight planner, you'll see that this is really uh, going to um, give a run for the money uh, for to Navigraph. And I think that at, at this point I may be ready to dump my subscription. Let's take a look at how to use the web based interface here and it's, it's fairly straightforward but I I like the um, the graphical interface aspect of it. Um, I think SimBrief is a little bit more text based and this one gives you a, a better connection to your flight planning in my opinion. So we start by selecting the aircraft here and then we're going to be using the DA-52 and you can just scroll through all of these aircrafts here are the ones available in 2024. I don't know if it will include any add-on aircraft that you have so that's I'm not sure about that I haven't seen one but anyway in any case you can scroll down or you can type here the type of aircraft that you want so in this case will be da 62 and I will just bring you that in and you can select that and then you go down the the, the list here and, and you're gonna you're gonna select your route here now there are a couple of ways to do this so our our, fl our flight it's gonna be an IFR flight and uh, you can select the, the speed and all of that uh, really not necessary for this particular flight but I'm just going to kind of select an uh, altitude of, let's say, 6,000 feet. And we're going to be averaging about 145 knots. And then um, you can either select uh, your origin from here. You can click Add. And then any uh, previous ones that you've done here will be available. You can clear this off if you want and you can add your own if you know the IKEA code or you can come into the map and in this case we have uh, Edinburgh over here so we can just click on it and it will show up over here and gives us information about the airport. Uh, we have general runways and frequencies. I think the runway uh, tab is really really uh, useful here uh, because it gives you a um, information about your wind so in this case six is going to have a tailwind of nine knots and a crosswind of two so let's take a look at 24 it's more um, to our liking here so nine knots headwind and two knots crosswind we're going to select 24 also you have your charts here for your departures, arrivals, and approach. In this case, it's just gonna be our departure here. Um, and then you have your procedures for uh, Edinburgh here, uh, departures, arrivals, and approaches. And lastly, the weather at this point with the visibility altimeter on all that good information. So we're gonna uh, go back to the route and we're gonna select EGPH. And, and then we get into the map over here and we're going to Manchester so in, again we can either go and do it from the map here or you, we can type in Manchester as our destination 
EGCC. And that gives us a straight line in the map uh, for our flight plan. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do this. We're going to use, uh, I'm going to show you the easy way here, which is going to select a, a, a suggested route. So if we click on that and double click on the suggested route, route, you can either go direct or you can use this one. And it will give us um, all of the waypoints along the way except your departure or arrival. For your departure or arrival, you could add your own. If you come over here, you could add a departure available here from uh, runway 24. We have three of them, four of them actually direct. Uh, this one goes to the uh, west, north, and this one goes to the south. So. This probably is the better departure here, uh, but you can also uh, select if you want to do this. You can select um, an auto departure here. So if we don't like that departure, we really we can get rid of it. We can come in here and select remove procedure, and that will be uh, removed. We can also auto select our departure. So yeah, so you can select that auto departure there and we'll put it in. Uh, I think these, that's the easiest way to do it, but you can certainly customize your departure as you want. Same thing with your approach. If we go back here, we can auto select our approach. And that makes sense for us because we go east and then come back into the runway. So that's that's actually very easy, very straightforward. Um, from here, you can go in into the flight details and put in any other information that you want, you know, registration, airline, and all that. The, the same thing with fa uh, payload and fuel. So in payload, we can add uh, the payload over here. It will have already some information about the sear fuel weight and all that. You can randomize the load or you can put in your number of passengers and, and all this uh, good information. So I'm going to click on randomize load. And uh, then we go into the briefing. Oh, before that, let's go into the fuel. Um, we have, we can add here the fuel. Um, using the average fuel burn, which is about 21 gallons per hour for this particular um, aircraft. And it will give us uh, uh, the number of pounds or gallons that we need at block fuel over here, 57. On the briefing, you get the same briefing you would get in scene brief with the operational flight plan and the uh, navigation log, all very convenient to have. And then you have some options here. You can set um, whether you want inches of mercury, hectopascal, and all that. And then on the knee board, you have all of your charts. And then you can come in and select the charts that you want to be saved. For example, I want my ground charts over here. So that will show up over here on save uh, charts. And um, the next thing to do is just go ahead and save this flight plan. And we can go ahead and give it a name. And it's uh, EGPH to e EGCC. Uh, all right, so save new flight plan. And that it's all there saved and very nicely um, done here. By the way, if you're getting something out of this video, uh, go ahead and give us a like and if it, I would appreciate a subscription. Uh, we are a channel that support pet adoptions. We support organizations like Pilots to the Rescue that uh, bring uh, the flights in pets from overcrowded shelters to shelters where they can be saved and adopted. It's a worthy cost and I appreciate if you subscribe. It will help our, ch our channel uh, promote and support those causes. All right, let's get back to the video here. So like I was saying, we have on the maps, we have 
options here um, in terms of uh, our flights. We're doing, in this case, we're doing our low IRFR flight. Uh, we have our um, waypoints that we can show our airports or not. Same thing here with navigational aids. You can select what is shown. If you want to declutter the map, you can just click off some of those. Same thing for waypoints. Um, and air spaces. We've got too many air spaces here. I'm just going to click off some of these things and, and just declutter the map a little bit. Restricted air spaces. And uh, we have a measuring tool here. You can measure the distance between waypoints. Weather charts, weather um, map here. We can get precipitation and cloud coverage. So in this case, we have some. And this is actually, um, sometimes you, it depends on your zoom level, how much you get. Oh, I made a mistake here. And, um, uh, but that's very useful. Cloud coverage the same way. You have to have some type of zoom level before they show up over here like this. And then you, the same thing for wind bars. They only show up at a certain zoom level. Let's go back to the simulator. And we're going to spawn in to runway 24. Over here. And we're going to select the flight now. All right, ready to fly. And before we go, let's go into the uh, EFB here. And this is very convenient because you can spawn into the runway and then you can just go ahead and bring in your uh, flight plane that you've created. And it's right over here, right at, available along with other, plan, other plans that you created. You just click on load. And the flight plan, as you created it, will be available here for you. Uh, if you click on route back in here, it will show you here your departure. Going north and come back here. And then the route with all those waypoints, including your approach into Manchester. Pretty, pretty nifty. And I think that at some point, this will be really, uh, um, I'm ready to give up my Navigraph account. Uh, I don't really want any more subscriptions. And this, this is, uh, this is really, especially if you fly GA aircraft, this is really helpful. Um, there's some limitations. If you fly the Phoenix, for example, um, there it might be some limitations. The Phoenix still doesn't um, allow you to import the flight directly from this tool. Uh, at some point, I imagine that they will. Uh, but let me show you the other the cool feature, and I think I showed you that in the previous video. Uh, you can come in here and you can um, scroll down over here and you can send this route to your avionics and it will be here available in your avionics. Uh, if you want to fly with ATC, you can also uh, file the flight plan with ATC. That's all covered in my previous video. So, so I was saying some limitations with the Phoenix. Um, so if you if you are pr primary flying the Phoenix aircraft, uh, airliners, uh, there might be some updates that they need to make in order to um, coordinate everything with the Phoenix. So you can import your routes that you created in the web base tool directly into the EF uh, into the MCDU for the Phoenix. Uh, so still a little bit of more work that they need to do for my liking here. Um, but it's very close for me. It's very close to getting rid of the um, Navigraph subscription. 
All right, my friends, I hope this video has been useful and helpful to you in looking at this tool as an alternative to uh, SimBrief and Navigraph subscriptions. All right, thank you for watching and see you on the, ne on the next one.